Hey, good evening. I'm political editor Dennis Welch, and this is Politics Unplugged. And tonight we are taking a look at a battle between Arizona's largest utility and one of the men elected to oversee that company and other Arizona corporations. And that man is Corporation Commissioner Bob Burns. The utility in question is the Arizona Public Service. And because this battle is now in court, APS has declined to send a representative saying they do not comment on pending litigation. So let's start with you, Mr. Burns, about this court fight and what this is all about. APS suing you, not the, not the Corporation Commission. What's the deal here? Well, I guess it would have to be because uh, I'm the only commissioner that has uh, basically demanded that APS open up their books so that we uh, understand and the public understands uh, what happened basically in the 2000, 2014 election cycle uh, relative to the amount of money that was spent by APS to influence that uh, that election. Talking over what two three million dollars here to influence that election, and for um, viewers who um, just kind of catching up to this, what's the significance of that? Why is this such an issue for you? Well, I believe that uh, when a utility or anybody else, for that matter, uh, spends that amount of money in an election, they obviously are looking for some type of influence, and so. If that is what's happening, and when it's done uh, basically in secret because the money was provided to a nonprofit organization or organizations that ran the campaigns, uh, the question has to be is there an attempt to gain undue influence over the regulatory body? And so that is a, I believe, a significant risk of undue, uh, unfair advantage against the ratepayer. So you're a regulator, you're paid to oversee this, and they're, they're soon, and you've been trying to get these records, would you say that they're trying to stop you from doing your job? Well, they're definitely trying to stop me from getting the records, and I think the records are uh, are available or should be available to the Commission uh, and to individual regu uh, regulators, as, uh, as the Attorney General's opinion has uh, concluded. So. So while APS did decline um, our invitation, um, they did send us a letter um, saying this, Arizona law does not require the disclosure he demands. Would you care to respond to that? Well, I guess that's a question that needs to be answered in court. Um, I disagree. I think the way I read the Constitution and the statutes, statutes uh, their, their books are available for us to review at basically almost any time. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting, too, is that the Corporation Commission actually um, voted four to one the other day to go ahead and fund your legal defense, your legal challenges mm -hmm. in this lawsuit that many of them don't support. Um, but, however, there is a cap on how much spending legal expenses there is on that. Can you care to explain that a little bit? Well, it's kind of troubling to me. I, I, I argued against that. I don't think there ought to be a cap on it. I think I ought to have... Uh, an opportunity to compete at an equal level with the opposition, if you will, uh, I think to establish an exit strategy be instead of a win strategy is 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 not the way to to address a uh, con confrontation, especially a legal one. And there's a talk about capping this at about what hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, there was a discussion about the capping, but that didn't uh, didn't wasn't included in the motion that passed. Gotcha. Now, there was some prior, um, another corporation commissioner, uh, you know, who was fighting off some legal challenges. He was never get, told that there would be a cap on this, what, was, was he? Well, I, I don't know that there was a cap on any of the, uh, of the funds that have been provided for uh, def the legal fees for uh, candidates, even since I've been at the commission uh, and before. There were, uh, you know, uh, legislative or uh, legal issues in, in previous corporation commissions as well and as far as I know there was really never any cap put on any of those yeah and do you think why, why would they talk about putting a cap on that would it make you harder to get your what you're trying to to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish well I don't I don't know that it makes it hard I'm not sure but I think it causes a problem possibly in finding uh, the right attorney mm -hmm. so and that that's our next challenge we now have authorized funding and so now it's time to try and hire an attorney mm -hmm. uh, the 
the attorney, the attorney uh, field of available attorneys in the state of Arizona, mm -hmm. there's a lot of those that are conflicted out by their association with APS. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show our viewers um, another quote from a letter APS sent to the commission. Now, it says Commissioner Burns is demanding election-related disclosures based on his personal view that support for any particular candidate should be open and transparent. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is my personal view, but I think I have a lot of other people supporting that same view, so I don't think it's an isolated review mm -hmm. or uh, a, a view. Uh, so I, I want to ask you to just take, get your opinion and what do you think with all this money that you suspect that is being spent by um, APS to influence elections. Do you trust that a majority of this commission right now has got the ratepayers' best interest in mind when they're making decisions? Well, I can't speak for them. Um, I think that uh, the records will show, depends on what happens in the upcoming rate cases, I guess. We've only had one rate case to, to date, and the utility didn't fare necessarily all that well in that rate, rate case. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see how, how things go in the rate cases. And are, are you really at all surprised at the dark money initiative? didn't make the ballot since this has really been a lot of news and essentially what we are talking about here is dark money dark money being it's coming from sources that are undisclosed they don't know where it's coming from are you surprised that ballot initiative didn't make it well i guess there was a only a one source of funding as i understand it and i guess when you're in that situation one person backs out it's over pretty much so um i don't know i mean does this come back i don't know if it does or not uh Actually, uh, my concern is focused on the regulated corporation. I know that there are a number of people out there that want to require the exposure of, of campaign contributions to any corporation. I think a non-regulated corporation is completely different than a regulated corporation. So last question, what's the next step in this process? Well, uh, for me, the next step is finding an attorney uh, <laughs> to respond to the the, the, the the, the, the orders of the court that I need to respond to. So that's next step for me. Um, All right. All right. Well, thanks a lot for stopping by. Obviously, we're just kind of beginning this process. There'll be a lot more to come, and I hope you come back and uh, uh, give us some updates on what's happening with that. But uh, we do have lots more to come on Politics Unplugged. Coming up next, the race for Congressional District 5 and still ahead, presidential politics. But first, Arizona loses a state treasurer. Reporter Jason Barry has the story nothing and we have put in some very good uh, programs an arizona icon a real life role model an authentic original with a hairdo no one will ever forget that's how friends and colleagues are remembering rose mofford after the former arizona governor passed away thursday morning and she was sharp former arizona attorney general grant woods served with mofford during her tenure at the state capitol Woods tells us he noticed right away how Mofford embraced the responsibility of being the state's first female governor, her devotion to helping families, and a willingness to reach across the aisle to get things done. I saw people like Rose and, and uh, Barry Goldwater and Sandra Day O'Connor and Mo Udall, and um, they all were kind of similar in many ways. They were very plain-spoken, very blunt, um, totally Arizonan. I thought that was great, and I thought, wow, that would be something pretty neat to be a part of. Rose Moffat would be a, a credible governor. Former Arizona School Superintendent Jaime Malera says Mofford took office at a difficult time for our state, following the impeachment of Governor Evan Meekum. But she handled herself with class and dignity and helped regain voters' trust in government. The thing that would impress me most about her is everybody loved her. You could have the most ardent liberal... Uh, Democrat or the most ardent conservative Republican, and they still would say nothing but nice things about Rose Mom. Jean Benet's brother. I don't want anybody to stop working on the case, focus on finding the real killer, and not focus theories about me and my parents. All new Dr. Phil. This is my final interview. Monday at 3 on 3 TV. The news is back in the morning. No dancing anchors, no pointless chit-chat, no wasting your time. Come on over and wake up with us. Just the news you need to rule your day. Come check us out. Wake Up Arizona, weekdays 4.30 to 7 a.m. 
Express Flooring makes the grade. Call now for a fast, free in-home consultation. A-plus for customer service. For a limited time, save up to 67% on carpet, tile, laminate, or vinyl plank. A-plus for savings. Buy with no interest until 2018, and we'll even move your furniture for free. Now that's some serious extra credit. Make the smart choice and call Express Flooring today. Express Flooring is the best. Call 800 Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. American Furniture Warehouse. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. Is my mic on? <laughs> We're Colorado owned and operated with over four and a half acres. Factories are calling us every day. We have the largest inventory of Simmons. Beauty rest, box bricks and mattresses in stock. Okay. <laughs> Make beautiful homes happen for less every day. We want to invite you to come and celebrate the prices, style, and selection for less at America. And that's no bull. Today, Cox has internet so fast it can power whatever amazing tech the future dreams up. You push your little button. 100 times more powerful Gigablast internet is here. Bring on tomorrow. This is what precision feels like. Magnetic ride control actively monitors road conditions a thousand times per second to deliver a comfortable ride. A thousand times, huh? Yep, per second. How about that? This is the new, meticulously crafted 2016 Sierra Denali from GMC. This is the precision of professional grade. It's the GMC 2016 model year sell down. Now get 20% below MSRP on select Sierra 1500 models in stock. That's over $10,300 on this Sierra SLT crew. And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. And obviously, we're going to be spending part of this segment talking about Rose Mofford, the Arizona's first female governor who passed away last week. And joining me to talk a little bit about that and other issues right now is our partners from First Strategic, Kurt Davis, Barry Dill. Barry, you brought along a little prop. It's, it's a little memento that I've had around the office for, for, for quite a while, along with my little Rose Mofford watch that she uh, presented to me on her very first trip to Tucson. I had the privilege of staffing her. Uh, in Tucson after she became governor yeah. and she was gracious enough to take off her wa watch she had on with her little caricature on it and hand it to me and I still have that in my office as well. Now Kurt, um, obviously different political party, different political philosophies, uh, you, you and Rose Mofford, what's she going to be remembered for? What's uh, you know, she did take over at an extraordinarily difficult time and handled it with great class mm -hmm. and she was also, you know, you couldn't you couldn't be around Rose Mofford and not laugh. Mm -hmm. She was she had a great <laughs> sense of humor, uh, and she really does beckon back to when politics you could disagree but you could be friends. And she was pretty feisty, from what I understand. I was talking to a uh, well, longtime Capitol reporter Howie Fisher, who we all know, and, and covered her, and he said, "Look, you know, she was a feisty woman." That's what that's part of her uniqueness. Mm -hmm. She's she's totally unique, and and I think uh, Grant Woods hit upon it made. Um, you, you, you know, being the very first woman, um, she was she was tough mm -hmm. and and was not going to let the boys push her she also push had her a very around. Good staff that mm -hmm. she put together on that ninth floor. Obviously, a lot of people weighing in on this. You saw that package, you know, former Attorney General Grant Woods. But we did catch up with current Congresswoman and, and Senate aspirant and Kurt Patrick, and she talked a little bit about Rose Mofford here. Take a listen. Uh, when her assistant Karen called me yesterday and let me know about her death, she said there were two things Rose really wanted. She wanted to vote for the first woman president. She wanted to vote for the first woman senator in Arizona. And she asked every day where her ballot was. Obviously, a little bit of campaigning going on there, but it doesn't take away from the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Rose Mofford definitely was a pioneer for women. Absolutely. And, and she tells a great story about when she, uh, you know, was in the Secretary of State's office and, and she dealt with, she did actually break a glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. And she deserves credit for that. All right. And final yeah. word on Rose Mofford. I think the best quote I've seen is she ate the glass ceiling for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> and that, that's a really good quote. And I think that kind of sums it up.
All right, now let's move on to talk about current political oh, issues God. of the day. I know, I know, it is that time. But as we're taping right now on a Friday, the Congressional District 5 uh, race still up in the air. We should be knowing later in the afternoon what's going to happen. Do you expect any changes from the outcome where Andy Biggs currently leads Christine Jones by 16 votes? I do not. I think, you know, you, I think you'll see some minor variances, but because we're in an electronic age, those ballots are, you're recounting an electronic uh, counting system and you will see I don't believe you'll see that big of a movement. And if you do see some big movement I mean that's obviously going to bring up another big question like that what the heck is going on with these machines right? Well this, this cuts two ways too. There could be a lot of movement going sure. toward the big side you know as well so that 16 point lead might actually grow and increase just depending upon what ballots were, were but allowed. I'd be surprised and if, not it's, allowed if to be. it's very it, it's usually a, a very minor change. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to, let's talk about some of these ballot initiatives now. One of the big ones is that minimum wage initiative, issue. Now, this is a measure that does look like it is doing pretty well. We're talking about Proposition 206. It raises the minimum wage to $10 an hour in, two, uh, in 2017 and up to $12 an hour by 2020. The measure would also create the right for, to paid sick time off. I understand that this is doing so well that there might not be any real opposition to it other than token opposition. I think you are going to see real opposition, okay. uh, and it's going to Where's be the money significant. Coming from? I think uh, you, primarily small businesses mm -hmm. who are going to be hammered by this initiative. Uh, there will be a real campaign. The question is: is is there enough time to have an intellectual conversation with voters about the the nuances of this, which are real? Or whether you really should get into a conversation. Intellectual about conversation. I mean, like, let's talk about let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, yeah. middle class Americans have not really seen a pay raise in 15 years. And I mean, we're starting to see some wage gains come back as the Fed released last week. And that's not who's going to get hammered by this. Who's going to get hammered are, are younger people trying to enter the workforce. It's not going to be those who are uh, in the in the middle or upper end. And I see Barry disagreeing workforce. over here with you. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, but it looks like well, you're disagreeing. Well, no, I, I, I agreed with 98% of everything Kurt said, with the exception of the millennials. I, I, think, I think this, combined with the marijuana initiative, might actually be a, a draw for millennials to get into the political marketplace. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. now, it's interesting that you bring up the marijuana initiative. Now, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about this. Now, this is, we're talking about Proposition 205. Now, this is, now, there is a big issue that's kind of emerging in this, and this is about the prosecution of drivers who are impaired uh, by marijuana. And this is a big campaign issue right now. Opponents of this message say it could have an unintended consequence. Maricopa County Attorney Bill Montgomery claims it will let drivers who are impaired by marijuana off scot-free. Supporters, of course, disagree. Let's take a listen. This provision protects marijuana using drivers unlike any other substance using driver within the state of Arizona. It does sound like it's making it a little harder to prove impairment with this. No, thing. so what it's, what it's doing is taking away the, the, uh, the ability to say you've smoked marijuana any time and you've driven, you're automatically guilty of a, of a DUI. What do you think, Barry? Is this going to be an issue that distracts the camp, the, this, uh, the, the, the campaign here, the, the pro marijuana? I, th I think there are two issues. I th yes, I think this one will be a distraction. I also think the entry of a pharmaceutical company that manufactures opioids, putting in money to oppose the marijuana initiative, also is a sidebar issue that will weigh in on. This is a real issue, and if they were telling the truth, quite frankly. Uh, County Attorney Montgomery is absolutely right, then they would have used current Arizona statute. Mm -hmm. But what's most important, if you're, if you're not sure what it may or may not do, realize well, that that's, voters that's kind approve of the thing it. Here, right? there's a lot, yeah. there's, there's a if voters there. approve it, yeah. there's nothing the legislature can do to fix it. And this is a state that has supported some of the toughest DUI laws in the country, if not the toughest DUI laws in the country. I doubt they're going to be, like, if, if there's any question about this, many of these voters are going to be saying, But by hey, and large, when voters are confused, they vote no. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to. I think that'll play in. It, it needs to be clarified before. Uh, I think Barry's right about that. This that's ultimately what I think will kill this initiative is uh, is confusion, and they'll err on the side of no. All right, we're going to have to take a quick break, but we do have lots more to talk about on politics. Unplugged just ahead. We turn to presidential politics, where former Secretary of State Colin Powell is suddenly caught in the middle. But I also want to see the debates 
At least one debate. Well, he's been quiet during the presidential campaign, but privately, Colin Powell isn't holding back about the candidates. In emails hacked from his account and posted on the site DC Links, Powell describes Donald Trump as a, quote, national disgrace and international pariah. The retired four-star general and former Secretary of State slams what he calls a racist crusade by Trump over President Obama's birth certificate. Powell also lampooned this prediction from Mr. Trump. At the end of four years, I guarantee you that I will get over 95% of the African-American vote. I promise you. Powell calls that a schizo fantasy, saying Trump takes us for idiots. But Powell is also lukewarm about Hillary Clinton. Writing a friend in 2015, everything Hillary Rodham Clinton touches, she kind of screws up with hubris. I would rather not have to vote for her, although she is a friend I respect. Powell also resented being dragged into Clinton's email scandal. Powell also dismissed the Republican firestorm against Clinton over the 2012 attacks in Benghazi as a, quote, stupid witch hunt. Powell confirms the emails are his and says there are even more out there. We'll be right back with more Politics Unplugged. Thanks for letting us come into your home each week. We pray for you, and we're believing that you're going to see God's goodness in amazing ways. Stand still and you'll see God deliver you. When you remain at rest, Almighty God fights your battles. Everybody around you is going to have no doubt the God you serve is an awesome God. I promise you this, every time you turn us on, we're going to try to inspire you, to challenge you, to help you become all God's created you to be. Stand out from the crowd, Arizona, in the stylish and smart Hyundai Elantra. Lead the way with more technological features than any vehicle in its class. Take charge with more horsepower and torque than Corolla and Sentra. And relax with peace of mind knowing Elantra received a top safety rating. Plus, get America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Now that's smart. Right now, lease a new Elantra for just $149 a month. Make the smart move and get to your Valley Hyundai dealer today. So good. Looks good, Dad. How good? 162 likes. Did I get any retweets on those green beans? Yep. And they're blowing up on Instagram. Honey, your rump roast just broke the internet. As it should. Life is family meal time and everything you need to make it picture perfect. Right, be sure to tag your mother because she needs more followers. Uh. Okay. Q50 holding short runway one nine or right. Q50, you copy. 227. Q50 from Infinity. Lease the Infinity Q50 2 liter turbo for $279 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. 51 hours, over $1,200. That's the estimated amount of time and money you lose sitting in traffic every year. But we can help save you some of that time and money with the 3 TV Phoenix Traffic app. Get live traffic conditions on the new interactive traffic map, up to the minute accident and construction alerts and see the road conditions for yourself with access to live feeds from traffic cameras on all the major freeways. Get the new and improved 3TV Phoenix traffic app. I should not be standing here today. I should be dead or in jail or in prison somewhere, but I'm still here, and it's because of those people. When everyone else had given up on me and lost hope. Help us help more than 1.3 million kids every year at communitiesandschools.org. And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. It's now time to move on to the campaign trail. Barry Dill, Kurt Davis sticking around to talk to us a little bit about that. Let's start with those Colin Powell emails. How does this affect the, uh, the campaign moving forward? Is this going to change people's minds or is this just more clutter that's out there? Well, it certainly sounds to me by the emails that he's going to support Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that has any huge impact, I would... I, I would I would think it I mean it, it doesn't hurt yeah now also um, what do you th what do you think about this what are your take on Colin Powell does people still look to him um, and and trust what he has to say no unfortunately he's had a political career that has demonstrated that he plays every side of every issue and I think his credibility quite frankly in the political realm is virtually nil all right let's move on to talk a little bit about the candidate Donald Trump now a big change this week now whether or not he's responsible for it or not Mr. Trump has certainly changed his mind on one thing. Here it is. President Barack Obama was born in the United States, period. 
finally he comes out and says that he's been born in the what United a States. scoundrel. <laughs> you know, it just goes to show his racist, bigoted nature and that he thinks he can say whatever he wants at any time that he wants. And unfortunately, the press covers this gibberish. Yeah. He's just a scoundrel. He's a leech. So is this going to hurt him with his base at all? Kind of, not kind of, I mean, completely backtracking from his birther investigation and all this. Which has been widely debunked as a conspiracy theory for years now. Yeah, no, I don't think it'll hurt him with his base because his base obviously stayed with him through a lot of issues on and off the court. So I, I no, I don't think it will have, it will have an effect mm -hmm. at all. Okay, let's move on to the other big issue from the past week on the on the campaign trail. Hillary Clinton's health. Obviously, she was diagnosed with pneumonia. It took her a little while to come out and say that. Some saying that she was hiding that for a while. Is this an issue, though, uh, that kind of plays into that narrative that you can't trust Hillary Clinton? Because the polls have shown that voters do not trust her. It, it didn't help. <laughs> um, I, it didn't help, but I still stand by the fact that it's it's no big deal. They, they, and in fact, if the campaign had put out a message on Friday when she was first diagnosed, mm -hmm. uh, it might have even turned out to be a helpful thing mm -hmm. by going to the 9/11 memorial when she was, you know, when she was ill. So just I, pile I, on it's just, another Hillary Clinton moment mm -hmm. of having trouble coming clean with the American people. I was going to say, how does Hillary break this? How can break you this? sit there and say that when Donald Trump now is? Just piling on. Thirty-eight percent of American the same people thing. think she's truthful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's. I mean, yeah, and, you, and, and, 40, and she and she goes to the she almost goes to the mining pit every day and tries to figure out just, how do I how do I create more of the narrative yeah, of just, distrust. You know, but, but on, the other, on the other side, Donald it's, Trump has went on Dr. Oz and he says I'm in perfect health, but he didn't release any records. <laughs> well, going on Dr. This Oz. This is a problem with Mr. Trump. Going is like, on Dr. Hey. Oz was smart <laughs> because that's like one of the doctors people actually know. And he's 35 pounds overweight and has high blood pressure too. Uh -huh. So he's a target for a heart attack I don't coming think up. Anybody as well. watching the uh, the campaign will believe that that he is not in as good or better health than Hillary Clinton. 38 mm -hmm. yeah. percent may may think she's not trustworthy. Less mm. than. 34% think that he's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could set the Polls are actually who's, really good this week for Donald Trump. She has continued to figure out how to screw up a presidential campaign like nobody else. Yeah. All right, now, now I want to move it a little bit closer to home. Now, health care is also on many people's minds here in Arizona. We've seen many insurers pull out of the market health care exchanges. We did ask Senate candidate Ann Kirkpatrick about that earlier last week. The Affordable Care Act, people call it Obama, Obamacare, has been the law for six years, and we need to come together in a bipartisan way and fix it. What do you think about that? Is this, I how think big, she's how, dead on. I think she's. It's it's not a perfect system, mm -hmm. and it probably needs to be tweaked. But, it's definitely, but it doesn't. It's, it's, it shouldn't it's, go away. Yeah, it's not it's, the issue it was in 2010 when she got in a lot of trouble for walking out of a constituent meeting. True. However, you're now seeing it's six years old, and we and we have areas of the state that either the providers change every three weeks, or you can't find a provider at all. Does that have an impact on the election? Absolutely. A bipartisan solution for a government single right. payer so right. system is going to be impossible. To now find. we got about thirty seconds, and I definitely wanted to ask you guys about this. Mark Cuban, the uh, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, offering Donald Trump ten million dollars to give to charity if he sits down for a four-hour interview to talk about politics. Policy. Your thoughts on this? I I think that's a waste. He doesn't have any policy, so they can't fill four hours worth of time. So, and quickly, we got ten seconds. Should he do it? Yeah, have fun. Take ten million dollars from that guy. He's blown enough ton of money. All right, okay, okay, that's all, that is all the time we have for politics unplugged this week. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next week. Good night.